Hello fellow fingerboarders, it is me again, Chris Daniels, aka CD Playa. The first major English speaking fingerboard community was TechDex.com, which was an unofficial Tech Deck fan page. Founded in early 2000, TechDex.com had a ton of fingerboard content, ranging from an image gallery, trick tips, video links, they even had a fingerboard ranking, which was awesome. But the most important things that they had were the community building aspects of it, which were the live chat and the fingerboard forum. The forum, which was called the Skate or Die Forum, was initially launched back in August of 2000. I remember waiting until my parents went to sleep, sneaking upstairs to the computer and staying late chatting away. I was young and shy, so I didn't post so much onto the forum itself, because generally I was a lurker. But I befriended another fingerboard in the chat room and his name was Dustin Tice, and later on we would chat on Instant Messenger as well. Unfortunately, the website was shut down back in January of 2001, most likely due to its name. Tech Deck ended up getting control of the domain, and in February, teased the upcoming launch of a new official Tech Deck community. Honestly, when it finally launched in May, it was super impressive. There was the Sites That Grind, which featured fingerboard sites from around the world as a featured website. There was the profiles of pro skateboarders. There was contests. They had a chat room and message board and even the ability to have a techdeck.com email address. Looking back now, it was an awesome community site that they built. Now there were tons of kids that would visit the site, naturally. And when I'm saying kids, I'm talking about pretty darn young kids, like 10 and under. The more hardcore fingerboard community that was originally on techdex.com was looking for something different. A former member of techdex.com skate or die forums, Rodrigo Ortiz, decided to launch Fingerboard Jabber to scratch that itch that the hardcore fingerboarders had. Many former members from the techdex.com joined this community. Additionally, some people stumbled onto the community through Tech Deck as well. After about six months though, the forum collapsed and the fingerboard community was left without a central spot to share fingerboarding. And the online English speaking fingerboard community was once again left without a central spot to share fingerboarding. Ben Unidan Mist and Jamie the Switch Kid Quist stepped up to the plate this time launching fingerboarders.net in the summer of 2001. Honestly, this site was so amazing and had an insane amount of potential. There was a flash site and a separate HTML site. A chat room and a message board were obviously central to the community. They even had rankings like they had back in techdex.com where you could send your three best videos to either Ben or Jamie and they would rank them to provide feedback on them. It was really a great fingerboard community. And I, along with many others, lamented when fingerboarders.net died at the end of 2001. 2002 was a pretty dark period for the hardcore fingerboard community. We had one forum option for those that were English speakers left. That was techdeck.com, which was a great community for most fingerboarders. However, it didn't fit those that were looking for a more mature and hardcore fingerboard experience. Nick Eggert, who owned Red Zone Fingerboards, this time stepped up and created the RZF forums. RZF was what the hardcore community was looking for. Registration was closed, and to become a member of the community, one would need to be invited in. Now, this kept the vibe feeling consistent within the community. Well, there was a downside to this. After a few years, the invite-only policy proved to be its own downfall, as RZF attrited too many users and only lasted until around 2005 or so. Finger Flip Inc, founded in 2003, was a forum community founded by Nate Thompson and Drew Glass. FFI, as it was referred to, became a staple of the English speaking community. Unlike RZF, FFI would open up registration in waves, typically around two months of the year or so, allowing new blood to join the forums. This helped to prevent attrition of members killing the community. Additionally, one could be invited into the community by an existing member. Another factor towards FFI's longevity was the leadership of the forum being stable. 
Nate Thompson picked mature fingerboarders to administrate and moderate the forum. One of the most important people during this time was Tina Wade. It's funny because Tina was actually referred to by many fingerboarders as mom. She was fair and level-headed, and she was a bedrock in the community for many years. Additionally, there were multiple levels of administration as well. At the very top were the administrators, which included Nate Thompson, Tina Wade, and eventually myself. The administrator had a responsibility for not only the forum community, but also technical aspects of the website as well. For example, this included fixing the website when it went down, or updating the forum structure, and so on. Below that were the global moderators. These moderators had permission to edit and delete content across the entire forum. Additionally, they could temporarily or permanently ban users as well. And lastly, there were channel-specific moderators. These moderators would focus on a specific subsection of the forum to ensure that the rules were being followed in there and to set a proper example. This structure allowed FFI to remain a positive and safe place for fingerboarders to enjoy their hobby. Fingerboard HQ was another English-speaking fingerboard community that was popular. Founded in 2009, it was founded by members of the UK fingerboard community. The overall admin was Harvey Glenn, and other admins included Blossom, as well as Carrie Williams. Fingerboard HQ was probably the most recently active fingerboard forum in the English-speaking community, and definitely left a strong legacy as well. Over in Germany, the fingerboard scene was vibrant, not only in person at events and contests, but also online as well. Oliver Rautenberg founded Fingerskate.de around the year 2000. The site had loads of trick tips, animation, and even a trick description guide that helped newer fingerboarders learn tricks quickly. Fingerboard.de was founded by Dirk in the early 2000s. Along with Bastin Mites, also known as Basti M, they built up the community and even had a contest where members of the community could submit videos to be part of the team. In 2004, that forum in particular became inactive. Black River Ramps launched a forum which was hosted by Max Eschenbach, known online as Esche. This forum lasted until the end of 2005. At that point, the German online fingerboard community faced a similar situation to what the old English-speaking community faced back in 2000 through 2003. There wasn't a stable place for fingerboarders to congregate. Luckily, a group of active fingerboarders at the time, including Bastian Stegen, Valerie Muller, aka Valor, and Fabian Afrobi Schreiter, decided it was the right time to build a fingerboard community at fingerboard.de. Fingerboard.de featured admins and mods like Stegen, Valor, Manu Oberla, Wagugu, Max Zulauf, Bjorn Lokin, among others. Up until around 2012, the community was active and vibrant. However, the advent of social media, and specifically Facebook groups, ended up making an impact on Fingerboard.de. In 2014, Afrobi made the tough decision to close Fingerboard.de. However, back in 2020, Afrobi relaunched Fingerboard.de. It is still going on strong to this day. So if you speak German and are looking for a friendly group of fingerboarders, be sure to check it out. I'm even a member to practice my own there were countless non-English speaking forums over the years as well. This included the Spanish speaking forum, fingerboarding.es, the Korean speaking forum, Finger Cafe, and Papanjari over in Indonesia as well. In general, message boards have become a relic of past times. This is due to the advent of social media platforms such as Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok, as well as topic-based communication applications such as Reddit and Discord. I personally miss the days of forums, when they were a central part of the online fingerboard community. There was so much bonding, collective knowledge, and so much history has actually been lost due to message board becoming archaic. Additionally, things are so siloed between all these social networks and platforms, and even within the social networks themselves as well. Having a central community with dedicated threads and posts allowed things to become much more structured and communicated and built upon in terms of an experience. In my heart, I know the message board is most likely done and has certainly been supplanted by newer technologies. Thank you all for watching this video on the history of fingerboard forums. 
If you've enjoyed this video, be sure to leave me a like, let me know in the comments down below, and then check out the History of Fingerboarding playlist, which now contains over four and a half hours of fingerboard content around fingerboard history. I find it even makes a good background noise when I'm cleaning up the house. A couple of side notes guys, I encourage you all to check out both the fingerboard subreddit on reddit by going to reddit.com slash r slash fingerboards, as well as the official discord for the subreddit, which is fingerboard underground. I have links for both in the description as well. They are a fun community. It is kind of reminiscent of the old forum days, uh, just a little bit faster paced. The real advantage to discord is being able to voice chat and video chat with all your friends. Also guys, if you are in the Pacific Northwest in either the United States or in British Columbia, be sure to check out the Pacific Northwest Finger Skate Collective on Facebook, as well as PNW Fingers on Discord. We are building out our own regional community through these platforms and tools, and would love to share local meetups with you, upcoming events and contests, as well as share about local companies as well. Again, links are in the description for these communities too, and I wish you all a fantastic day. Go fingerboard, and may your kickflips be as steezy as they've ever been.